This tutorial shows how to conduct the Friedman test aka Friedman ANOVA in SPSS and in the pre results. Its purpose is testing the medians of the same or related individuals at three or more points in time for differences. For example, I want to see how good a three-week exercise plan performs. That means before implementation, I record the physical condition in some form of a test score, which is often considered as the baseline measurement. After the conclusion of the three-week exercise plan, the same test is performed again and a final time after three more weeks. I use the Friedman test to test for a difference in the median test score over time. The requirements for the Friedman test are the following. Three or more measurements for the same individuals or matched sets of subjects. A dependent variable on at least the ordinal scale. To get a first idea of my data, I can look at the descriptive statistics for my measurements. Select them, right click and click on descriptive statistics. I can see an increase of mean and median between T1 and T2, but barely from T2 to T3. Let's do the Friedman test to elaborate on this further. To conduct the Friedman test in SPSS, go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Related Samples. Now you have some customization to do. Go to Fields to select your measurements by moving them to Test Fields. For my example, score in T1, T2 and T3 are the variables being tested for differences over time. Next. Go to Settings and select Customize Tests and also check the box on Friedman's 2-way ANOVA, K Samples. Make sure you have multiple comparisons set to all pairwise. Under Test Options, you can specify a different significance level alpha and confidence intervals. Exclusion of cases is not applicable in this test scenario. After checking all necessary boxes and options, click on Run to generate the test results. The test results will be shown at the top, showing the hypothesis test summary. You can see that the null hypothesis of a difference between the time points equaling zero is being rejected, according to the Friedman test. After a Friedman test with a sufficiently low p-value, the requested post hoc test should be looked at. You have to scroll down a bit, past the bar charts showing the ranks and their frequencies. Those bars will supplement what the descriptive statistics from the beginning already hinted, especially when looking at the mean ranks. The table, pairwise comparisons, shows all time points compared with each other. As one would have expected from looking at the graphs and descriptive statistics above, the comparisons of T1 and T2 as well as T1 and T3 show very low p-values. Please note that the adjusted significance in the last column is the one you have to look at, to be protected from committing a type 1 error. The adjustment used is Bonferroni, which multiplies the p-values with the number of pairwise comparisons to give you the adjusted p-values. To summarize, the intervention after T1 led to an increase in the overall score in T2. That remained roughly constant when looking at T3 and the respective differences to T2 and T1 as well as the p-values. Finally, you might have a Friedman test with a low enough p-value, but no low enough p-values in post hoc testing when controlling for alpha error inflation. That is not a contradiction and the internet is full of discussions about this phenomenon of significant tests and non-significant post hoc tests. Just keep in mind that a p-value, to which it all boils down to, is a function of sample size, which decreases with an increase in sample size for any effect size that is different from zero. So a non-significant test result in almost all cases tells you you're lacking statistical power as a result of too small of a sample. Whether the magnitude of the effect size is relevant is part of another discussion though. Don't however do past hoc power analysis to justify your non-findings because the observed power is a one-to-one -one function of the p-value. After doing post hoc tests, you should calculate the effect sizes for observed differences. An effect size for the Friedman test itself is optional. The two videos shown now will show you how to do each.